I frequently use discussions for handing in work. This is an example of a graded discussion that I'm doing and it's for my web scripting class. And I like to use rubrics on the discussions so that my students know what I'm looking for. Now this class meets live so I don't have assigned points for feedback in the discussion. But I do like them to look at each other's work, which is why I'm using the discussion instead of the a Dropbox for this. When I use a discussion, my rubrics don't automatically show up like they do for an assignment. So I use Jing, which is free software, to take a screen capture of the assignment rubric details. And then I will capture the image and I will save it with a meaningful name which would be programming lab and the nice thing is I do all my programming labs the same way code, code quality and meeting project requirements and then I will save that to the desktop and then I can go back in and I can edit my discussion theoretically. There we go. I can edit my discussion and I can add the rubric right to the bottom. I find that this really helps my students to know what I expect from them. So I've got my programming lab image. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to upload and I'm going to add it right into the discussion. I believe that this makes my quality, what I'm grading for, very clear. And I like to do this because the way that I grade is a little different than they might see in some other classes. For code quality, when you're creating HTML documents, you can have something that appears to be perfect and still have errors when you view the source code. So if, it's, if there are no source code errors, then they get the full points. If it works, but there are some minor errors, in my line of business, that's average work. If it's functional, they get most of the points. And if there's errors in the display, they get less points. Now you'll notice that for meets all project requirements, I tell my students that just meeting project requirements is what the average student does. Those are the minimum requirements. So you'll notice that where it says meets all requirements, that's average. That's seven points. That would be a C. They actually have to exceed the requirements, and I don't specify how they do that. They can have more content, more engaging content, but they have to do more than the minimums to get 100% because the average person does minimum. And if I'm giving them an A, I want to make sure that they have actually earned it. So I make that very clear on exactly how I'm grading here so that they shouldn't have any questions. Now I could have potentially trimmed this down a little smaller but this does let them see when they go into the discussion, it's right in front of them, they know exactly how I'm grading it. Um, students do appreciate when they understand exactly what you're looking for when you're grading.